I think it's important that we, we talk about concomitant use of Botox and the, smart, the antibodies. We can start theoretically or we can start practically. We're starting to talk about with the mechanism of action, the theory of, of how these two might work together. So botulinum toxins block the release of vesicles that contain neuropeptides and neurotransmitters. So they interfere with the SNAP protein that prevents these vesicles from binding to synaptic membranes and releasing their contents. So if you're able to get the botulinum toxin to penetrate a nerve, usually it's an unmyelinated C fiber that they're able to penetrate by injecting close to that nerve ending. It will get into that nerve and block the release of all the potential neuropeptides, whether they are CGRP or PCAP or amylin. They all require that vesicle to bind with the presynaptic membrane. So it will globally shut down that nerve from releasing those neuropeptides. And there is a theory that there's some retrograde axonal transport that might also inhibit the release of the neurotransmitters like glutamate from that specific nerve that's been um, injected around, um, as opposed to a monoclonal antibody that specifically targets an individual uh, chemical like CGRP. So I think the way of thinking about them is that Botox is more like amitriptyline. It hits multiple receptors, multiple mechanisms of action for amitriptyline. Botox hits multiple neuropeptides and neurotransmitters, whereas a monoclonal antibody is more like an SNRI, very targeted to an individual chemical. I would extend what you said. Botox works on C fibers, antibodies on the A delta fibers, and basically you're, with one you're hitting one nerve type, the other you're hitting a second, and if they're not synergistic, I would be very disappointed I have a very practical viewpoint of all of this. Um, and it's similar to what we talked about before. So, and it's similar to the way that we prescribe other preventive treatments. Um, so if somebody is on a preventive treatment that is, has some effectiveness, but not desired level of effectiveness, what we would do in practice is add something else that works differently and determine whether or not the patient can tolerate it and whether they respond to it and whether it works better than what they were already on and then start to simplify their regimen. And so I approach Botox and a CGR monoclonal antibody in exactly that same way. And I think that the um, pushback that we're getting from payers about either not covering them both or in some cases requiring that the patient come off Botox first for four months, okay, is nothing but cruel and unusual punishment for our patients. And it has no basis in science and no basis, basis in rational prescribing. The only purpose of their behavior is to it's save financial. money. It's financial. Steph? Well, and in that case, they may be winding up losing money when that patient winds up in, in the, the ER, ER or hospitalized exactly. because they ED. They don't mm -hmm. like they don't work. Oh, there. sorry, it's not emergency a room anymore. Department. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you for How correcting about you me. <laughs> well, I've capitulated. I'm sorry to say uh, because we our payers are so so intransigent about it, and so I have very few patients where I've been able to actually leave them on both. I've, I've talked to medical directors, I have begged, occasionally I've gotten them to approve it, but the vast majority have required me to have them not on concomitant on a bot and monoclonal antibody. What I've done is the same day they get their injection of Botox, I give them their monoclonal antibody samples and then have a way of following them forward. Unfortunately, Dartmouth prohibits samples. Uh, but I think, in my bias, I'm going to analyze all of our patients on combo therapy. Clinically, they're synergistic, mm -hmm. and, I, and I think we have enough patients now to prove it. I think almost every one of my patients I've given anybody to was on Botox. A few of them had Botox failures because I wanted to know that question. 